We do need to touch on Italy. Uh, you know, let's let's discuss that one first. Um, they beat England uh, 1-0 uh, at home in Milan, and then they follow that up by winning at, a, at Hungary, a Hungary that beat Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Italy wins that 2-0 to win a very difficult group in the Nations League uh, and qualify for the semifinals with Croatia, Spain, and the Netherlands, uh, which that'll be, that'll be a very intriguing semifinal, no doubt. Let me start with this question here, because I think that there's... I felt like the Calcio Twitter ranks, and maybe I wasn't paying enough attention to it, I think it was like almost like an, a, a subdued celebration. Like it was, oh, you can go and do that, but you can't qualify for the World Cup. Did you did you feel that way? I would celebrate this. This is, you know, and I'll get into my reasons why, but I want to get your your feeling about Italy here. Uh, you know, winning this group, winning this very competitive group, and qualifying for the semifinals of the Nations League. I did get that feeling, um, and I can see why because it appears that. When the games don't matter, the friendlies, the competitive friendlies, the Azzurri do well. And then when it's actually time when it matters to play in the prestigious tournament, which is the World Cup, they shit the bed. And it's infuriating because you see well, you see what they did at the Euros. It was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Nation Leagues, they do well. And you're like, okay, where is this for the World Cup? We missed the two World Cups now. It's ridiculous what's going on here. And it's mind-boggling. It, it, I get it. I agree with you. It should be celebrated because they're in a final. I mean, imagine if they win the Nations League, right? Let's just play devil's advocate. If they win win the Nations League, the hysteria is going to be, oh, you can win the Nations League, but you can't qualify the World Cup, right? And, and the teams they're going to beat possibly are great teams that will all be contending for the World Cup. So, yeah, it's it's a funny dynamic, I guess, with the, with the, with the Nations League. And I agree, celebrate the victory because they beat Hungary, who is very good, and and you know be germany as well be england um so they they did what they had to do won the group which who would have thought of that especially the place where they're at they look like they might be get relegated uh and they come and win the group after after the couple match days so uh yeah interesting times again didn't make the world cup but uh certainly should be celebrating the the nations league victory and going into the the finals um with the the other three teams so well okay so here's the, here's a the couple of things that that I want to draw attention to here. What ultimately kept them from qualifying for the World Cup? A failure to score goals and a failure to score goals in critical moments, right? Um, yeah. Let's peel the onion back a little bit on that. I mean, what else did Mancini do, you know, throughout the, the, the final stages of World Cup qualifying and then up to the playoff against North Macedonia? Stuck he played the, the same guys. He kept playing the same guys. He kept playing a Nicola Barella who could barely run. He was playing like every three days between club and country yeah. for like a yeah. year and a half. Yeah. Uh, he kept trying to play, play a Chiro, Mobile, Chiro Mobile in the hopes that, okay, this time he's really going to do it. You know, he, you know, he kept going back to the same thing over and over and over again. It's not that Italy were found out. It's that... They weren't in the kind of – I don't think they were at the fitness levels. I don't think that they were at the freshness. I don't think that they were at the motivation that they were at at the Euros. I think that you had a handful of these guys pretty much running on fumes. I think Dominic brings up a good point that maybe he showed too much loyalty to the team that won the Euros. Right, and we talked about this when they didn't qualify. It was that it was time to flip this a little bit. There's too many guys here playing way too many games, and I think it's catching – you know, it certainly was catching up to them. And, and so the reason why – a big reason why I think this needs to be celebrated is when you look at the team that he put out there against England, I can't – you can't think of a – you can't imagine a worse Italy team I know. <laughs> for that I know. game. I mean, that's like the immediate two reaction. guys starting at a striker. Like unless, Woody, right? unless you, like, played Ranocchia back there, <laughs> oh, um, you know. But, but look at it. It was, it was different players, and it was a different system, 3-5-2. And – when I reflect on this, I'm looking at past Italy coaches. None of them were willing to adapt. Mancini nope. looked at the World Cup qualification failure and said, "Okay, I got to mix this up. Yeah, and I've got to, I've got to tailor to the strengths of what I've got." He maximized Federico De Marco's talents to a T. Somebody said it. I can't remember who said it on Twitter. Said Federico De Marco's left foot is a cheat code. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, he's it outstanding is. over the you two did well? games. Absolutely. You know, Raspadori with the goals. Three-man right. defense, two capable defenders that you can play on either side of Bonucci so that Bonucci's not part of a two-man center defense where he has to absorb more de- defensive responsibility because, as we've been saying, at this stage in his career, he just isn't the defender no. you know, that he used to be. But, man, he's still got the long ball, doesn't he? He does. And he can still pick one out, A beautiful that beautiful assist to Raspadori in the win over over, over England. Well, that, had, that was at least a 60-yard pass. Yeah, he, he's, um, he's always done well at those. Yeah. Taking a look at the squad that was available to him and coming up with a system that makes it work, we know damn well Ventura wouldn't do that. No. Um, Conte was stubborn in his 3-5-2 in the Euros, and yet he had success because he probably had a worse Italy to pick from than Mancini ever had, even this group. Yeah. Lippi would not not only not change his system, he would not change his players. He remained loyal to the guys that won in 2006, and that blew up in his face in 2010. Yeah. Um, Prandelli, he, I think he rotated a little bit, but he got him to the final in 2012 in the Euro final. But then 2014, I think his, his approach just got stale with the players. So for me, it's, I think you got to, I think you got to celebrate this. Okay. You know, to, to win a group that had Germany and England in it. Okay. And a good Hungary. I mean, these hung, this Hungary side is good. And when you can relegate England. Yeah. um, Chin chin. Yeah. I mean, it, it just kind of, it just kind of sweetens things. Uh, And, and to do it with a willingness to adapt, we have not seen that from an Italy manager in decades. So I think, and I think the that that's an part encouraging of this whole thing. weekend was that we possibly found a striker who is not Immobile or Belotti in Raspadori. He's a little guy, plays a false nine, but he does it well. Scored in both games, right? Um, so there's that. And then potentially you're going to have Skamaka because Skamaka's starting to do some things in West Ham. He's, tr- he's slowly coming along. Mm-hmm. So imagine having a thunder and lightning combination of Skamaka and Raspadori where mm-hmm. you could, depending on who you're playing, you could change them up. Uh, Raspadori looked like he scores already, but let's, you know, maybe Skamaka comes along and maybe someone else comes along in the fold down the mix. Uh, maybe Colombo, Lorenzo Colombo down the line, right? Uh, but uh, Raspadori, I think that's the best thing I saw from the whole the whole Nations League international break is that we have a striker who can play the false nine, not necessarily your typical striker, but finds a way to get it done. And he succeeded and they yeah. succeeded. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I don't know if the semifinals for that have been established or not. If somebody knows and wants to help us, if Italy has an, a known opponent or if they they do a draw for that, I didn't I didn't yeah, look sure. that far ahead. I was just happy no. to see. Yeah. Um, just happy to see the uh, performances. 